All right, I would uh, like to call uh, to order the hearing for the Dyke Water District on November 18th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for the proposed water rate increase. Uh, we could all stand for the National uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're going to start with um, Jeff Clunan, the superintendent of the water district. He's going to explain um, the rate increases, what they're going from and what they're going to, and just get, kind of give you a brief overview of um, why we're doing it and how we're getting there. We also have Scott with uh, Woodard and Current to answer any technical questions we, the, the audience may have. Um, and then I have Eric Horatz here, another sitting member on the Board of Commissioners too as well. And um, without further ado, Jeff, go ahead and uh, go for it. All right. Thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Jeff McLuhan, uh, Superintendent of the Dayton Water District. I'm also a living in the district. Um, so I'm going to give a little background of the Dayton Water District what we have and what we're comprised of. Uh, the Dighton Belt Water District was established in 1950 and currently is comprised of 1,924 service connections, uh, approximately 60 miles of water main. We have five well sites. Uh, our, our, newest, our newest well was put in in uh, 82. So we're, our wells are fairly old. Water streets from the late 70s. Uh, and cedar is 60s, 80s, and then we drilled another one in the 90s, but it's not a great producer. Uh, so they're, they're all getting a little longer too. Um, in 2006, the tree plant was built uh, to help with the iron and manganese issue that Dighton was having, and it did that. Unfortunately, um, the treatment plant was not a great design, and it is functioning somewhere around 60% capacity. So we, we struggle with it, uh, especially at high demand times, um, and counting the wells that we have. Uh, they don't recharge well, so it's a struggle. We've gotten through it, but unfo again, unfortunately, uh, Dighton is one of the largest growing communities in the Bristol County, if not most counties in Massachusetts, percentage-wise. So it's been hard uh, keeping up. We've added, I think it was a, a little over 400 homes since the treatment plant was built in 2006. So uh, it's, yeah, it's been a juggling act there. Um, a few of the projects that uh, we are doing uh, we have several much needed projects uh, to keep up with the growth of Dighton. Uh, so last year we were SRF funded, uh, listed for uh, Main Street water replacement. And if you live in Dighton, you do know that Main Street is a problem area. Uh, it breaks a lot. And the town approached us because they want to resurface it. It's been, I think, Tom Ferry told me somewhere around 30 years before since it was last done. So it didn't make a lot of sense to resurface that road and then see another 20 or 30 water main breaks destroy it. So we got listed on an FR, SRF uh, program through the state. Uh, it's estimated to cost somewhere around $5 million to replace that water main. And just to put that figure into perspective, uh, the treatment plant costs seven. So that is where things are going with costs. Um, and then hopefully some point in the spring or the summer that project will start. Uh, and we have another much needed project, especially due to the growth of the town, uh, is the purchase of the Brook Street Wells from the Somerset Water Department. So we entered into negotiations with uh, Somerset to purchase the well on Brook Street, if any of you are familiar. That, that cost is roughly uh, $6 million. So in order for Dighton 
to grow and build. We need more water. So as you can see, the projects are mounted. Um, there are several other projects that upgrading Cedar 3. Uh, it is a vacuum system and we are, it is not very drought resilient. Uh, last summer we took a beating over there and it's our best quality water, most abundant water, unless you have a drought. It, it was a rough summer. Uh, Cedar 3 has a vacuum system which does not, it, it's antiquated. Uh, submersible wells are much better for that area. Uh, that is not, that is a project that we'd like to do, but it is obviously not in the books right now. That, that won't be cheap. Uh, so the rapid growth of the town of Titan has made us explore for new sources of, sources of water as well. Uh, we did two well explorations. One was on Cedar Street. Uh, we didn't find anything there, but we were able to find a yield approximately 70 feet off of Cedar 1. Uh, so we want to, we're replacing Cedar 1. Um, Cedar 1 is giving us around 60 gallons a minute, so that's a, more like a house well, not a water system well. We, we did find water there, and the yield was approximately 275, 280 gallons a minute. So we're going to replace that. That cost is roughly $600,000. Um, as far as what about the other place for the oh, yeah. water? So we did find water on. We also did an exploration near near Milk Street um, in the pits. We we found a yield there. Um, we were negotiating with the owner of the property, and the price uh, did find its way to go way up on us. Uh, we had a price that, and we found water and it got a little more expensive. We're still looking at that area uh, for future water, but he, uh, we have to have a negotiated price with the owner. So as you see on your paper, on the second page, if you guys have the Alright. Um, the 
speed. There's a fixed charge of $85 as a customer service fee. Um, that's a charge before gallon one. You're going to get $85. So this is every six months. You'll have a, uh, a fee of $85 as a service fee. Then you'll have a tier system. There's three tiers. The first tier is 0 to 20,000 gallons. That will be 583 per thousand. In the second tier, if you go over 20,000 gallons, so 20 to 80,000 gallons will be 636. Uh, tier three is 80,000 and up. That's where our most of the irrigators will, would likely be with between the tier two and three. Uh, that price is seven dollars and sixteen cents per thousand. Um, out of district customers. Thank you. 
Yeah, 235. And how about regular stabilization? That was between uh, funding from the town versus funding that actually mm -hmm. comes for payments for the water bills because mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about a rate increase is that actually going to get rolled into these uh, projects that you're talking about or is that going to get paid so, by a tax increase somewhere else so the rates and your tax is, is all we have to that's what we have to work with um, and like I said 97 percent of you are burning we're not Swansea or Seacock with a good split. Um, and that's unfortunate. We don't have the business. Uh, so, yes, every cent that we receive from rate and from tax is what we have to spend in, in, to pay the bills. Uh, and it can get really, you know, we have to have enough money to pay that in the beginning of the year because, like, the treatment plant comes up in July. Ours? Yeah, in July, so we need to have that five hundred thousand dollars to pay that note every every year um, in July. And, uh, so, so we can't just like pay it every month. No. So the tax, yes, what are you referring to? What is that a specific tax you're referring to? The the water rate, the water tax goes on to, uh, goes on to your tax bill. Okay. Uh, it's a portion. Of, it's a Portion of your tax bill. There's a line item that actually says that I'm paying for water. Yep. With this Electric, that one, I think. Um, I'm just talking about rates. The rate increase, I, the tax hasn't been set. Um, so, right now. I'm just trying to determine. We're saying, hey, we got a list oh. of stuff we want to do over here. 
I got you. And we want to do these projects. And by the way, there's this rate increase. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if there was actually other costs not related to the rate increase. It sounds like there might be because that means that if the tax rate changes as well, we'd be we'd be discussing a rate increase, but that's only a portion of the story. Yeah. So the rate. All right, let me go back a little bit. Like I said, over the next two and a half years, I'm not getting an education. As many of you know, the tax came in to pay for the treatment plan because there was only. I think it was 1,400, 1,400 service connections when the treatment plan was built, and it cost $7 million, and that's not going to, your rate would have been 30 or $40 per thousand. So they put the tax in. They passed that. So we've had the tax ever since. From my time here, I've seen the tax go like this. More so up now. Right? It jumps around according to our articles, uh, obviously what we need for the operations. Um, the, the hardest part on the tax recently has been the moratorium because over the last, say, 10 years, the building was pretty, the was booming, right? All these new houses were coming in and we were getting hundreds and hundreds of uh, millions of dollars was coming into the Dyton Water District fees to build. Previous uh, board boards would keep that tax low by funneling that money to alleviate the tax. We don't have that right now. We don't have that influx of money coming in to say, you know, we're gonna give what was used to be around three to five hundred thousand to alleviate the tax. Am I right? It was, it was artificially bringing the tax down and making everything look great when it isn't. When, when projects weren't being done, and things weren't being done. I'm hoping, and it's not going to be an easy road the next, I'd say up to five years, let's say five years, but if building starts again, if we can get more solvent, on our feet, stabilized. I don't know if I can see a day that the tax won't be there, but my hope with the right study was to level it off, was to at least, and we had talks with the DOR, we sat in with them, and my, my whole focus with them was, you know, kind of did not like jerk, you know, you're jerking everyone around one year, it's great, next year it's horrible. Why is my tax going up? They call the town. Why my tax is going up? What about it? No. I don't want to get it stabilized. That is not going to happen overnight. Was, was that supposed to be a permanent tax when it was originally created? I don't know. Can you guys back up on that? I'm not sure. It is now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, that. So the, uh, the special act that created the district, uh, it authorized the Board of Water Commissioners to establish a district tax, uh, but there's nothing that requires that to be permanent. And so uh, it really, that can change over time, depending on the situation of the district. And Seekonk used to have a tax, and then they went to, they built up, they have huge, but now they do not have a tax, so they got rid of that tax. Uh, Swansea's a lot like us, but they have no business. I want to say they're like 70, 30, or 80, 30, uh, heavy on the tax. We're more 60, 40, 60 being the tax. Um, but they're all up there, can keep it down a little more because of the business, because of the amount of customers they have, and we don't. It's, it's, it's a goal. <laughs> yes? Dave Rosa, Free Lincoln Avenue, North Dyke. I'm not inside your district, but I'm still highly concerned. Um, you mentioned solvency. So, if you don't get your increase, mm -hmm. how long will you remain solvent? That would be one question. Hang on before you answer, please. Uh, you mentioned also that I believe you're, you're talking about making use of the Totten Waste Treatment Plant. Is that I mean, I'm water. 
Oh, I, somebody mentioned a waste treatment plant. I believe you were standing there. That's not me. Oh, okay. So no. you're talking about another treatment plant? Uh, water treatment. I'm sorry. Our treatment plant and on William Street. Oh, it's only to treat the water. Yes. That yes. goes into the pipes. Or the we're clean water. We, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no worries. No worries. Um, um, okay. So uh, the solvency issue. Yes. Is, uh, and you also mentioned the building of all these new homes, and that was an influx of cash. Mm -hmm. The homes are still there, they mm -hmm. still pay bills. Yes. So I don't, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand your world. By the way, thank you all for serving, if I can say that. Um, I don't understand how one day the, the flow of money is there, and then now it isn't because they're paying their water bills, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, as far as, let's go to that one first. Yeah, the are paying, they're paying the water bills. But it's a lot like schools. You get bigger, and where, where do you put the kids? Right. So it's we're we're 70 years old. Water mains are breaking. 400 homes isn't going to have a giant impact on a five million dollar project, as far as and we're not going to keep that kind of money anyway uh, in our in our coffers because that happened 10 years ago. I want to say, and they we had I think they had two million dollars and they. Gave it all away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm when, sorry, who did they give it to? What's that? You said they gave it away. To alleviate the tax. Oh, okay. Yeah, lower the tax rate. Um, so if if we don't get this rate, these rate um, excuse me, these rates weren't proposed, uh, they can be higher or lower. Essentially, it's going to come from the tax. I'm sorry. Essentially, it would come from the tax. Okay, but when does that happen? That tax rate setting is soon. It's a, it's a set. I'm sorry. Tina has. Tina has. The tax rate? December 8th. Yeah, December 8th. Yeah, December 8th. December 8th. They set the tax rate. The town uh, looks it up, budgeted, what we're perceived to get in. To, in um, receivables from great uh, usage, and then uh, they set the tax. So everybody in town will be contributing? No, just oh. the water district. Just, the water just district. they set the tax rate for you know, light just, but all the other different districts. North Valley even gets their own. Um, so the town sets our tax. So your solvency ends on December. No, no, we'll, if we don't, it'll come from taxes instead. I mean, we'll get more. Obviously, it's it's not. Well, Main Street got approved. It's five million dollars. You keep the rates where they are. Your taxes are going to go up uh, considerably. Well, trying to balance that split. Hi. Yes. Mary Lala, four sixty two L Street. Can you tell me what the capacity of the plant is now today? Yes. Our, I, we had a master plan done, took a while, but it was a little over a year ago we had our master plan done. The treatment plant's capacity, I'm actually showing it to me, it's a little over 700 gallons per minute. How, do you know per day? We, we have, we, we're permitted, there are two different numbers, so the, the state allows us a certain amount of water to pump um, per day, per but you can go over as long as you stay under for the year. It's an average. Uh, we're allowed 750,000 gallons a day. But on average, you can go to a million a uh, year. It's an average number. Right, right. Um, so are you going to be in doing, um, increasing the, the, wet, the um, plant? Are you going to do upgrades? So uh, if we get this well from we, Somerset. My hope is when we get the well, it will buy us time with the plant. Instead of a brand new plant that right. cost $7 million 20, 8, 16 years ago, you might as well triple that. Now, it will buy us time for that plant because we have the well pumping in this house. So our firm capacity, you know, one second. We have to stop the other meeting, but we'll come right back. So what do we do? Just, we just got to open up the I just have to open the next meeting. I'll finish that right now. Continue this. So we have to, make, we have to make a motion to recess this hearing and to start the town meeting, the end of the meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm.
recess this town hearing so we can start the uh, uh, I'd like to make a motion to recess this uh, public, hearing. public hearing to start uh, the special, special district. Mm -hmm. And I'll step down and second that motion. Uh, any discussion? So we're going to recess this meeting because we have to start the special uh, district meeting at 6.30 or shortly thereafter to stay on track with what was posted. So we're going to recess this portion, do the annual special district meeting, and then come back and do this. I'll answer all your questions. Correct. No, we're going to do the whole meeting. We're just going to do the whole meeting. Yeah. So uh, any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Right, so we'll come back to that. <laughs> Greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the Dyke Water District, duly registered and qualified to vote district affairs, to meet in the Dyke Middle School in said town of Dyke at 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, November 18, 2021, then and there to act on the following articles. Article 1. I will entertain a motion that nominations for moderator be open. Madam Clerk, I move that nominations be open for a moderator to preside over this meeting. Second. The motion has been made and seconded that nominations be open for moderator to preside over this meeting. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Nominations are now open for moderator. Madam Clerk, I move to nominate Scott Dingus for moderator to preside over this meeting. Second. The nomination of Scott Dingus for moderator has been made and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion that nominations be closed. I move that the nominations be closed. Second. The motion has been made and seconded that nominations be closed. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Nominations closed. All those in favor of Scott, the moderator to preside over this meeting, raise your hands. All opposed, raise your hand. The ayes have it. I declare Scott Dinkus, moderator for the meeting. Welcome, Scott. Good evening. Are there any housekeeping motions? Mr. Moderator, I move that the district consider adjournment at 8 o'clock. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that we dispense with the reading of the warrant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that we dispense with the reading of the articles and that reference to them be made by number and content. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 2. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district votes to raise and appropriate $25,000 to be transferred to the Other Post-Employment Benefits Liability Trust Fund, established to cover the unfunded actual, actual area, Jesus, liability for retirees, health care, and life insurance benefits. I second. Motion made and seconded in Article 2. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 3. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district votes to raise and appropriate $50,000 to be transferred to the district stabilization fund. I second. Motion made and seconded. As this is a transfer stabilization fund, so it's required a two thirds majority vote. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Oh, oh sorry. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Linda Hall, 760 Main Street. What is your current operating budget?
current budget is 1.3. 1.3. And it's 2.5 Thank you. Any further discussion? So I'll first take a voice vote, and if it's not unanimous, I'll take a hand vote. Sounds good. Like All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 4. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district vote to raise and appropriate $200,000 to be transferred to the district capital improvement stabilization fund. Second. Motion made and seconded. As this is a transfer to capital stabilization, that's required a two thirds majority. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 5. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district vote to raise and appropriate $40,000 to replenish the system maintenance line due to unexpected repairs. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 6. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district votes to raise and appropriate $5,000 to replenish the postage and the mailing line. Second. Motion made and seconded in Article 6. Any discussion? Yes. Um, what caused, I would imagine you're adding additional funds because something happened to cause the an additional need. Yeah, like sending what? letters for the people that have the MIU. The MIUs? The, we've been sending letters, like we got one that your MIU needed repairing, that there was a software issue. We were doing extra mailings. Shouldn't that, um, can you please state your name in that? Bill Mello, 1693 Wellington Street. Now, that was a software issue, and it was due to defects that were introduced by the supplier of the meters, why weren't they paying for those mailings? Because there wasn't a warranty on that? They, no one warranties that. No meter company. They don't warranty labor. Uh, they warranty the product most up to 10 years and then prorated after 10 years. That's, I'd say that's the standard for most of the companies. Um, they, they don't warranty labor. Uh, they don't warranty any of that. Just the product. You have to get it. You have to go. We, we, we negotiated with them to beat them up a little bit on it, uh, to come in and, and help us with it, uh, and they they did. Uh, that saved us somewhere around two hundred thousand um, dollars. So they are they've come sporadically. Uh, they should be coming back in December. Uh, we're just regrouping a little bit because we. We're not getting the outpouring of meter changes that we need, uh, so a lot, of, a lot of times they're here. Uh, the mailings work to a point, uh, but we're in a little bit of a standstill right now. Um, so, it's, yeah. so that's where the mailing money went. Uh, they're not warranting anything but literally the puffer for 10 years prorated. Understood. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Say no. 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 Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Article 8. Oh, I'm sorry, Article 7. Um, Mr. Moderator, I move that the district votes to raise and appropriate $120,000 to replace media and one treatment filter and any necessary repairs. And I'll second that. Motion made and seconded in Article 7. Any discussion? Bill Mello, 1693 Wellington. This is kind of the same question that Selectman Hall asked about the mailing. Is this $120,000 surprise late in the year, or is this typically how we would get new media uh, at a special meeting? So, I couldn't do it in the summer because we're going to be down a filter. Uh, the filters are designed to last somewhere between 10 and 15 years. That's the manufacturer told me. Um, that's what, I mean, media gets old. Um, we rehabbed our first filter two years ago. 
we, we budgeted for uh, media. It, it wound up being a full rehab. Uh, the structure stayed in place, but they had to redo all the grout. They had to take the entire thing out uh, because uh, the words and what I saw was that we were looking at a catastrophic defect at some point um, because of the condition it was in. Uh, I don't know if there was any oversight when it was put in. I honestly don't know. But the under drains were so bad that he said, I don't feel comfortable putting it in the media. He said, I'd probably be back here in a couple of years. So then we decided to do the next filter the next year. Uh, and we have to do them in the winter due to flow conditions. Um, we can go down to two filters in the winter this season, but we, no way we can do it in the summer. That's why it's, it's but, on this. I mean, sort of the answer to the question of it's on every, every time we do this. We have done the last two years, it goes on this meeting. We only have three. Yeah. We only have three filters. Um, they're at their life expectancy. They, they've done their job and then some. Uh, the two filters that we redid are working better. I just don't honestly like they're like I said they they've outlived their capacity their their life expectancy and I would not want to be here telling you I I'm sorry it's summer and we're down to two filters. Okay, and, and how did we arrive at a price of one hundred twenty thousand dollars for the media? The manuf so last year and the year before the price was the same. I think it was one hundred five. This year price cost gone. Well, we got bids, right? We got we got a we got the price from it's a proprietor system through Roberts filters. So they are the only ones who manufacture this. They manufacture the parts for us because it's a um, outdated filter. They don't make it. So there's parts in there that they actually fit. Um, we use the company that filter. I would be more than happy to show anyone here that too. I mean, I'm there. You can come in. Okay. Sure. You can see the leaks, and we have to have a welded. Uh, they leak. They leak. Not terrible. They leak. Okay. Any further discussion on the side? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article eight. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district votes to raise and appropriate $60,000 to purchase a new utility truck. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Jim C. from Main Street. Um, how many vehicles do we have on the road right now in one of the years of the uh, manufacturing? We, uh, we have two 2012 Chevy two-wheel drive uh, pickup trucks. They both have um, well over again, yeah, well over 100,000 miles. Uh, we have 2009 one ton. Uh, actually, got to get that body welded. We're going to have a going to have a the body's rotting out, so we have that welded the, the, just to keep it because it, it is in good condition, but it's it's not the bottom. Um, uh, what year is Barrett's truck? Paul Barrett's. 2008. 2008 Ford F-250 that uh, is recently just brought it to the uh, uh, shop and I, I was told not to plow on that anymore. It's rotting away. Um, we have Strike's truck is it? 18? 19. 19. We do have a 2019 350. It's in great condition. And hopefully we have it for a long time. That's our newest truck. Uh, F350. Great truck. Um, yeah, we have we have a we have a dump truck that's not really street. We don't really put it on the street. <laughs> we got it for free. I don't count that, it's from the 60s or 70s, it just moves things around the island. Does this truck kind of stay stationary at the water department or personal use? 
No, that's not, it's not going to be mine. I use one of the 2012s when I'm around, or I use my own. Um, that's going to be, for the treatment plant, we have, we have one truck right now. We, have, we really don't have a plow truck. Plow the stations and stuff. So. I contacted MHQ, who has to bid for trucks. Um, they said if you order a truck right now, you're looking at next Christmas. I really wanted the 250s. Said I have three 350s on the lot, and we have one right now. It's, it's a great truck. Um, he said I'll hold one for you. We'll put it on here. Uh, this truck will have a will have it'll have a plow plow package. Um, it's going to have a crane. So the crane, an auto crane. So the crane is used to pick up pipe, reset hydrants when they're knocked over. Pretty awful holding a hydrant up when someone's fingers are under a pin and you try and put your fingers in there. So I got a crane, and the total price for that was just over fifty-seven thousand. And you don't look at anything but Ford. What's that? You don't look at any vehicles but Ford. <sighs> yeah, we could. They, they'll be considerably more. I think. You get the Chevy or GM. Uh, we've had good luck with the Ford we have, the 350 we have. And I know some of the troubles some of the old 250 two-wheel drives had. They, they, the front ends were terrible. Uh, but this 350 seems pretty good. I'm hoping they fix those problems. I think they did. Um, I have nothing but luck with the 350 we have. And one last question. Yes. Who does, uh, who does the maintenance on the vehicles? Is that something that we'll, the we'll, does it? We don't, have, we don't go to the town. We generally go to a local gentleman in town, um, uh, Mr. What's her name? Bob, Bob Corey. I didn't know the name of the show. But we go to Mr. Corey, and uh, he does our oil changes. We've had quite a bit of maintenance. I mean, they're getting old. Some of the trucks are getting old. We lost a, we had a Ford Ranger. I think it was an old two Ford Ranger. They used to put around the leaf spring broke, and that truck it had. So kind of like the 08, it just was, we got a, it was beat up, I don't know. We're going to keep this truck a lot better and hold our employees more accountable. Uh, I think that the trucks that we have right now and the employees in them, they're, they're, they take care of them uh, very well. But that's up to me to make sure that these trucks aren't beat up. Any further questions, Arcos? Eight. All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 9. Mr. Moderator, I move that the district at this time proceed to bestow deserved honors and recognition upon persons who have significantly contributed time, talent, and or resources to the mission of the Dyke Water District. I will second that. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 10. Mr. Moderator, I move that to, oops, sorry, to, tan to transact any other business that may lawfully come before said meeting. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there any other business? Moderator, I move to dissolve the special district meeting of November 8th, of November 18th, 2021. Second. Motion made and second. It's a non-discussion motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The meeting dissolved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Time, I would like to call back to order the Dighton Water District public, think, public hearing uh, discussing the proposed water rate increases. Capacity. Uh, the state allows us 750,000 gallons per day uh, on an annual basis. We're generally around the per day 500,000 gallons per day on an average. So you still have room? 
according to the state. So our wells, on the other hand, will produce around 700 to 750 gallons per minute. All, all combined? All combined going. And they don't work well when they have to run all day every day. They need rest time. Very strange. They're shallow. Uh, two years ago in the drought, um, we were experienced. We had, I think it was four, five, or six days of uh, over a million gallons per day. We maxed it up. We couldn't keep up. The tanks were actually continually to go. We were holding the line, and then it was just no, no, no. And I'm, I was panicking due to the fire protection issue. Uh, we, we couldn't keep up. Everyone was just sprinkling. And uh, so, kind of had to put that, the ban. We put the ban on. Thank God we did it when we did because it was, the drought was horrific. Um, our wells were down 50, 60 percent. Of all summer, we could do a product. We were doing around 550 gallons a minute coming into the plant. So what we have coming in and going out are two different things. You can have seven, eight hundred gallons a minute coming into the plant, but then we have backwashes, we have rinses, we have so that uses a considerable amount of water in our process. So you keep it can't be equal. Uh, so, so we've it was about four, four or five years ago they were. They were doing around 10 backwashes a day. Uses 15,000 gallons every backwash. We've we've got it down to three or four with with the with the improvements, educating each other and just kind of picking away at it. Uh, that summer, if we well, we have so much data on it because it was incredible, but the we we're doing three backwashes a day and it saved us. The chemical changes and just kind of. Get to know the place better uh, and save us. It's because if it was 10, we'd be dead. We, we would have we would've been in trouble. Buying, we would have been buying one from Tom. Um, so, Brook Street comes in handy because so now I have three filters that have been replaced. Theoretically, it should buy us 10, 15 years. Um, simple, you know, the maintenance around it is, is what it is, but it's not. It's not horrible. Brook Street can pump. It, it's blowing. You can go over there and look at it come out of the, the hydrant every day, all day. They just pump it. Um, That's good clean water too, correct? Yeah, it's low, in, it's low in iron and manganese. It has low, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with PFOS, if anyone's heard of it. Uh, the numbers are under that. Our numbers are under the limits. Uh, we just did our PFOS uh, tests. Um, that was stressful. I didn't think they were going to be good. They were very good. Um, our numbers are at 6.8. The state wants them below 20. And 10 is like a trigger point where you have to spend a lot of money in sampling. So right now we're good. But uh, that well is it's, it's a good well. And then there's a, a backup behind it. So if something happens to that well, they drilled another one already behind it. They tested another one 100 feet away. I haven't been using it in three years. Three or four years they haven't used that well. They stopped using it. Somerset has THM problems. I don't know. I don't know if you read the papers or you know. They have some THM issues. It's cancer causing. Uh, they're very high. Uh, the, the worst area is Dighton. It's just in Dighton has the highest. Not my water, but they have. Their, they go from Brook Street, Elm, Chase, kind of all the way up to Somerset, and then have a little of a heart. It's insane. One side's mine, one side's theirs. You can't make this stuff up. This, this, this. Uh, they were here first. They were here in the twenties, I think, yeah. those twenties. So um, they shut the well off because it was creating an issue with their lower part of town when the when the treatment when the surface water was colliding with the groundwater. It was creating some nasty, dirty water. We are groundwater, so we have our problems. So, so they shut it off and then started drilling, got drawing from the from the plant. It helped them with the dirty water and it made the, it. They lost their power plant. And they don't use as much water, so they have high THM. Anyway, 
We want to use that well to alleviate the issues we have with our plant. And uh, try to extend the life of plant. <laughs> and not to mention, it's a good producing well and it, it will help the town's growth. Not that anyone wants more building, but it's my job to find one. So we won't need to upgrade the plant, add another filter? No, we can't. No. I don't want to add a filter. You can't add a filter. You're building a building. <laughs> you can't just put a filter in this room. You can maybe go to another process. What do we have now? Sand filters? Uh, we have it. It's called upflow clarification. So it is a, a lot of media. There's a different levels. There's six or seven different levels of stone, garnet sand, you know, yeah. charcoal, all, all kinds of stuff. But uh, it would have been better if it was green sand. When they designed it, um, they had three companies come in, I believe. Uh, one was Xenon, which I wish we had. The next one was, I can't remember, I'm sorry. And then this one. I believe they picked the right <laughs> So, um, and at the time they weren't approving pressure filters, which are very good. Roberts makes them very good. Uh, for one of our wells is under the influence. It's called under the influence of surface water. So we had to have this, our well, our, uh, our treatment plant is actually a surface water plant. To be honest, it's indoors, but it's a surface water treatment plant due to one of our wells being under the influence. They call it under the influence of surface water because um, it's so shallow and it's near the river. So they didn't have the other process that would have been better as well approved. And now I think I believe they do. Yes, countless millions if we had to redo that. The Brook Street well we're looking at. What's capacity for that? They are allowed 550,000 gallons a day from that, I believe. 550 a day? I believe it's 550. It's 500 gallons a day. It's 500,000 gallons a day, give or take. Yes? How do you determine and who determines where to go looking for this water? Uh, so, the first one was Cedar Street, where there was land for sale and we already got wells there and the existing infrastructure. So that was me. We went back and there's a piece of land for sale behind one of our Cedar One. Um, didn't find anything in the land for sale, but we did find something on our land. Um, it's a kind of a it's a crap sheet in a weird way. You, you want to go where the aquifers are. We know there's one there. Uh, the Milk Street was very close to Somerset's well. So we were we did find a good we found a good amount of water there. Um, again, there was a piece of land there for sale. And it made sense to look close to a very well producing well. A, good, a very good well. So we looked there. We did find it. Um, to build that, I like the known. We know Somerset's well produces. We know what the compounds are in it. We know how its effectiveness. Um, so we want. We I much rather have what's there and built, ready to go. Uh, somewhere down the line, if the town needs more water, that land is there. If we. So they have a check on Main Street. I've lived on Main Street for 35 years now. And I can tell you I've had 10,000 gallons of water go through my basement. That's probably from my water man. <laughs> I'm only kidding. No, I'm telling you, there's been never, never ending source of water. Can we, we can, do you want to talk? Uh, we can talk later. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering why they didn't. Uh, do they, uh, have they ever checked that? Yeah, no, no. So, so the first one I did with environmental departments, the second um, well exploration I did with uh, Water in the current, and they, what's that called? GR, what do you call it? When you, they go around the area and like, seismically can see where there's depressions. Yeah, I think you would, if I may stop yeah. it, yeah. the current, um, but it's, I'm not sure where you are on Main Street, but it, 
you find those, those pockets where it's pretty clear there's water around, but you can't necessarily put a municipal well there depending on what the development is or what, you know, the, the level of development in a certain area because of the protective radii and that sort of thing. But we did identify this source that was near the Somerset Wells, and I think the original discussion of purchasing the wells or acquiring the well from Somerset wasn't received as uh, favorably as everybody hoped. And so we investigated a nearby property because the rights were there and it was available and it was potentially for sale and the development of it wasn't going to be happening. The fellow was interested, so it seemed to make sense to take a look. There's water there, um, but as Jeff said, I think you know, clearly the protective radii are there and, and you can make sure that the source is protected and it meets all the needs and requirements. But if you have the protection area in there, your main street could be a good so yeah, this is what I'm saying is this is the one that feeds that pond that yep. they drained and they filled back up in what, two days? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of water back there. I'll have to take a look. I would like to take a look. I can show you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely want to talk about that. The, I do think the Brook Street well will get diking through some, some hot times. Uh, it'll help us with the plan. It'll help us with staffing. And I, I'm not going to need, I don't think we'll have to fill the next treatment position when that gentleman retires. Three people. So, I think it helps. Any other questions? Yes. That well. That Somerset has that runs down uh, to Rock Town, where you said it's been as a planking point. Does the lease ever expire on that where it comes up for us? Uh, the, there's some, uh, I'm dealing a little bit with the legal stuff and so on so that. But um, no, they own it. They bought it for a dollar. <laughs> I believe they bought it for a dollar. It was a dollar, right? No. They got, that might have been a different piece. They, they got it for some. That's the best water in town. Wait a second. We came in later, 1915, drilled yeah, some house walls for a water system. Oh, I, yeah, I can just clarify. Any, uh, any, any property that Somerset has that's indicted, that's theirs basically forever. Unless the deal, you know, like with, with this discussion around Brook Street, but they own that. Like they, they exercise eminent domain power they had back, you know, decades ago. So that's the answer to that question. I mean, it was more of a fun time back then, where no one, everyone had well. The old diet was different, it was manufacturing, and they had little models. Anything else? I know this is hard. I, mean, I just we're just playing catch up now. Unfortunately, we have to do it. It's, uh, I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay more. Uh, I know no one does, but to get us back up and up to speed, uh, to you know, replenish our infrastructure and find more water, it's, it's one of those necessary evils. And it's. Um, I know it's going to be tough. Uh, right off to get up, but going forward, it's not going to be this big, huge jump all the time. It should have been done over the past couple of years, instead of just all at once. So. Just one last question. Um, all the new developments that are being put in, are they allowed to come on to the town water, or are they all well? Right now, uh, no, unless they've already been previously approved, which is approximately 150, about 150 are approved. Previously, before we signed a moratorium back in July of 2020, we had the moratorium put in on any connections to new existing um, structures. Unless the main goes by your house or you lose your well and it's there, a um, single connection will allow. Uh, if you have 100 acres and you want to put 200 houses, um, you get one. One service, so that's right now. That's not going to last forever. 
you have to come up with a solution. There's, there's, there's a clock on it. It took a while, but we think we have the solution to that. But this is a small water system, relatively small, but extremely technical. So this water treatment plant that treats groundwater, uh, 60 miles of water main. I mean, the infrastructure alone, a lot of our water main is from the 50s, 60s. It's just the wartime water main is really poor gas. Anywhere you go into town, uh, it's not a good test. We have, we have issues with that on Main Street, I mean, great house. Somerset Ave is a nightmare way to happen. Um, Center Street, Tremont. It's old. It's old. I thought I was done, but I have Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> How long is, uh, when is the water construction supposed to start from Main Street? And how long is it going to last? And do they have a map that's available? So we, we did a walk through last week. I think it was last week, two weeks ago. Um, I want to say summer next year or thereafter. The the you have to there's no note do uh, not the note. Something with the SRF has to start in July or June, June 30th. So I'm referring to it. But uh, it has to start before June 30th. We, I anticipate this starting summer, fall, next year. <laughs> Um, and they're going to do it in phases because it, it, it requires temporary above water, temporary water. So they're going to phase it instead of just water all the way down to uh, the old church down, down at the, the tracks. Mm -hmm. It's going through county, um, just past the post office. It's about it's three months. It's about three months. A little three months. Resolve the issue with Comcast and Verizon about the poles? Uh, on Main Street? On Main Street? Right. That is talk. Oh. <laughs> That's talk. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't done that. Sorry. Any other questions? Any, anyone here can feel free to call me. I'm more than happy to give you a tour. I just, I have a question. Yes, of course. I spent a, 16 years, 8 months, and 3 days in Easton, uh, town of Easton Water Department. My boss told me that when I left. He was great. Uh, I still talk to him. Um, it was a great job. I uh, loved it. really wanted to become a superintendent. I thought coming to my town I live in would be the right thing to do. Um, I was a money issue. I made less money. So. Yeah, I thought it would be good to be home where I live. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> this is probably I've, I, this is a stressful job. Um, there's a lot going on. The projects are long. Two and a half years. That's two and a half years of projects. Um, you don't sleep much. That's tough. I mean, you know. Especially in the summer. You know what I sometimes have to deal with. <laughs> right? How do you keep the peace? <laughs> Good job. That's tough. <laughs> um, but, uh, I like Titan. We like Titan. They like Titan. I don't, no one here wants to have you lose any more money. I don't want to lose any more money. <laughs> um, it's bad enough when you're paying it for gas and everything right now. I just don't know how to stop it. We don't. This is the stop gap. Should have been done years ago. I say that. I say that a lot. Um, but it should have been done. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the rates as presented. I will step down and second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you all for joining. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Good.